My name is Paolo. Uh, I work with annotation since about 14 years. My first system was about uh, annotating clinical guidelines. It was called markupping at the time and not annotation, but since 2008, we started to use the term annotation, and since I've been, I've been working on the modeling side, so annotation ontology first and open annotation now, and uh, on the development side. And um, I've been developing an application called um, DOM Annotation Toolkit. So basically, DOM is, is, a, is an entire annotation platform that um, I started in 2009, is in production since 2010, and uh, it allows you to create standard annotation, that means highlights and comments and open discussions, and is used mainly by scientists, but has been used in other fields. And um, he does a lot of the things that have been discussed in this yesterday and the day before. So you can imagine creating um, highlights and comments, but also discussion, but also uh, semantic tagging. And uh, the, the platform actually, we didn't stop there to comments and highlights, but we went into, um, into structured annotation, and I'll show you what that means for us. And since day one, since 2009, the idea was to export all the annotation in RDF. So that's why I started to work on annotation ontology and then on open annotation. The idea was to open up science and not close it down, not create another silo. So day one, open APIs for exporting the RDF. Um, it has been integrated because of the structured annotation and the, and the RDF, it has been integrated with other platforms. So from this platform, we can actually feed databases and knowledge bases in science directly after annotation. And it has been used not only in science, uh, but also in other fields. And the development keeps going. Uh, this is like a five years uh, long ride, and this was Domio back in 2009. So you see the right column that is there, and now it's, it's basically a standard. Uh, the right column is used to show annotation, but also a lot of information that are related to the content you're looking at. So for a paper, you see references, you see additional data related to that paper, you could see mashups of the people that wrote that paper, and so on. Or you could see, for instance, um, the summary of all the figures that I've been using that paper, because scientists, sometimes they just scan the paper really fast to look at the data, and the data our surface through figures. And then, of course, you can um, annotate content. You can highlight comments and so on. Domio supports multiple targets, so you can highlight different parts of the document and have one single annotation. You can annotate a figure and a, and a piece of text. You can relate two pieces of text in the application, things that came up yesterday. Um, actually, it's interesting. The, the actual plugin that was relating two pieces of, of content has been removed because it, it, users thought it was too complicated. Uh, so we've been you know, going back and forth with all these features. But basically, when you create an annotation, you decide in which layer that annotation lives. So you have what we call annotation sets, or what yesterday have been called layers. And you can group the annotation for, by task, by topic, and when you group the annotation, you decide who is going to see that annotation. A group of people, yourself, publicly, um, a dynamic group that you put up at that very moment, and so on. And again, this was the point since 2010 as it is. And the set of features kept growing and growing, and the complexity of the platform kept growing. And so this is what a structured annotation looked like. In this case, it's called micropublication, and there's a paper that talks about the model, but basically you highlight a chunk of text and you say, this is a claim in my paper, and this is all the evidence related to that claim. And, you, and as evidence, you can cite um, other passages in the paper, uh, references to other papers. You can cite figures, because again, figures represent data, and you can cite them in a positive or negative way. So you can say this is positive evidence or this is challenging evidence. And the evidence can come from other papers. You can cite a passage in another paper that has been created by annotation and say, this is evidence for this claim in this paper. And basically, visually, in a few seconds, what you create is a network of claims and hypotheses. And this is a tool that is deployed since 2006, and it shows you uh, the, the argumentation network of multiple papers. So we use this for Alzheimer, and the idea is once you annotate all the claims, you just link them because it's all RDF at the end of the day, and we can link them and show you that, for instance, we have two claims here, 
and that red square in the middle says these two claims are in disagreement. And so if I'm a scientist or I give out money for grants, I might look up into that because I want to see where scientists do not agree and maybe we need more research why they don't agree on that. Then DOMI has tools for searching annotation and displaying annotation and so on. But over the years, we ran several user testings, and we learned a lot of small things about UI, about interaction, and lots of little things. But this is what I learned at the eye level. DOM is a very, very complicated UI. It has a lot of plugins, and it's easy to think, oh, I make plugins and everything works fine. But we ended up with multiple versions of the same plugin, with plugins that talk to each other. It becomes extremely complicated extremely fast. So in Domi, what we did is we have profiles. You can switch on and off plugins, and you can push profiles on people. So if you are doing a particular task, you see only a piece of the interface, what you need at that very moment. Still, one UI is not going to solve all the problems. Anna mentioned that two days ago, and the, the topic came up multiple times. Sometimes you need to, uh, to uh, annotate high-resolution images. Sometimes you need radiographies. Sometimes you need MRIs, 3D something. You need tools that are appropriate for doing that. And they exist already, but they are not obviously enabled for interoperability. Then we need more powerful backends. So initially you focus on how you create the annotation, and then you start focusing how I make that available and how other people can plug into that. And as a matter of fact, there's a lot of features that can be done once in the backend, and then lots of clients can benefit from that. The central annotation app model doesn't work. We have a ser client server architecture has been deployed multiple times, and so we have multiple servers. Those servers need to communicate because pharmaceutical companies have VPNs. They, they install inside the VPN. You don't see anything, but they want to see outside. Other folks want to publish some RDF read only, and so on and so on. As we always thought, DOMI allows you actually to cite as evidence real data. Data matters. So if you want to do annotations, sooner or later you get to the point where you're asked, I need to link and annotate my data and link them properly. And I'm not going to talk about that because I want to talk about other things. So this was the learning curve in five years for Domio. And what happened is with Field two years ago, we started to say, look around in Harvard, and there were so many exciting projects about annotation. And the problem was all of them were you know, single developers, and none of them was communicating with each other. And so we thought, we create a hub at Harvard where everybody can throw their annotation in there and we can cross-query everything at the same time with open annotation. So I explained open annotation to a series of developers and it turns out that it's easier to ask them, just dump your data to me and I'll do the translation into open annotation and, and that's what happened for the most part. Then Phil um, moved to HarvardX and we started to focus on HarvardX and he already said the story. but. Uh, basically, in Arvardex, we use an annota a derived annotator JS client and uh, with, with a lot of features that it showed. And it's using basically this backend that now is called Anotopia. And it's interesting because, again, we have a backend. They can use it, and other folks can use the same backend. And they can focus on their primary business that is making the users happy, which is a really hard task. Um, so, Anotopia is a universal annotation hub. The idea is. Whatever format you have, you just send it to me. I write a connector if I need to, and I normalize into open annotation. But at the same time, while I feed the triple store with all the triples, I also store the blob that came in, um, and I also store the updated blob. And I can speak about that later. This is too, too technical to explain, but URIs have to be updated and blah, blah, blah. But, uh, so I keep copies of what came in, and I normalize it so we have always an away copy of the content. So we can cross-query video annotation, text annotation, everything that has been sent in the same way. The idea is uh, Anotopia allows you to store the annotation, to persist it. It gives you URIs back that you can use, and you can then obviously use the proper APIs. And uh, you can annotate literally anything that is identifiable. Uh, we use it for data. So you have data sets and parts of data sets. We use it for documents, video, whatever, whatever you might think of. Um, and again, we want you to focus on, on the front end because making the back end is just something that can be done most of the time once with some extension points. Uh, Anotopia is not only for storing annotation, but it's also for um, searching, reporting, 
Tax mining. We use tax mining in annotation tools. We provide a uniform UI, a uniform API. So if you want to use tax mining, you call the API and you say one tax mining A, and we do all the rest. We connect to the web service, we do the tax mining, we normalize the tax mining back to one single format and protocol. So when you are writing the client, you don't have to worry about the 25 formats out there for tax mining. And uh, extension points, annotation never ends, trust me. After five years, I keep receiving a long list of requests every week. Um, and obviously, we are moving to a more distributed architecture. So if you want to use Anotopia, it doesn't matter what client you use. You can use Anotator.js, you can use your own client, you can use video annotation, you can use really anything. A data annotation client, if you look inside data set and you want to annotate those, just send the data to, to Anotopia as they are and we'll do the rest. You can even use two clients for the same thing. You go into Hypothesis and you annotate the HTML, you go in another tool and you see the annotation you produce in the other tool because the Anotopia does the mediation. Uh, you can install your own server. If you're a pharmaceutical company, you're going to do that. Uh, you can rely on a server that is already installed. Uh, you can use it just for publishing open annotation. If you have a good system, I think at Open uh, uh, Peer Library that they have a cool uh, Meteor uh, backend and they do their stuff very well, but they want to publish open annotation, they want to unload their server, they can push, op they can push annotation to the, the node and that will be a publishing node. And finally, we want to support federations. Just to give you an idea, there are several components. This is already on GitHub, and this is the storage. Um, and again, the idea is you send in whatever you have, we normalize it, we allow to, with APIs to query for it, to get back all the annotations that have been sent in by documents, by topics, and so on. We support collections of annotation. We support document variants. Uh, Doug was mentioning different versions of the same document. In Domi, what we do is, if you open the abstract, you open the full text, you open the PDF, you open whatever version, we understand in the platform that they're talking about the same thing because we have PAMED IDs and all the IDs and the titles of the things. So we provide you with the same annotations. So if you see the abstract, you have virtual annotation, that's how I call it, that says, well, the rest of the paper that you don't have, this is the annotation for it. So if you want, you can do all this mix and match and. Now it's, it's handled by the platform. Uh, and again, the idea is, is very, very simple at the end. We want everybody to annotate, and no matter what they tool they use, what, what they're annotating, we want to be able to look at annotation all the same way. So if we are annotating 3D models, brain imaging, or just simple text, we want the hub to, to let you query everything the same. This is the idea, and obviously we are opening APIs for other applications. The, the other idea with, Harvard, with the, the Harvard Hub was that we want to enable students to experiment. So why every time students have to experiment with visualization of annotation, with other pieces of the annotation business, why they have to invent their data, find data, massage the data? We give them access to the app, they will have real data to work on, and they will have real-time feeds of everything that is happening. We have already some installations. Obviously, Arvadex is one, uh, but uh, we have one in Mass General, one at LLE Lead Pharmaceutical. We are working right now with Manchester. They have a very cool PDF annotation tool called Utopia, and it will communicate with the app. So in Domi, we will annotate the paper in HTML. They will annotate the PDF. We can actually see each other annotation basically live. And we are going to have an installation at the European Bioinformatic Institute. If you're interested to know more, uh, Everything is on GitHub, everything is open, Apache 2 license, and uh, please contact me if you need to know more. All right, question. This is a pretty small thing. I was just wondering if you could say more about the text mining API and what functionalities it has. So um, we integrated several technologies over time, and they're all available. Some of them are simple entity recognition, and they are based or not on ontologies. That means we have services you can load whatever ontology you need, and in science we use, for instance, protein ontologies, gene ontologies, and things like that. And automatically the text mining goes through the text and, and uh, through a web service and finds all these terms and gives you all the term back, and then you can cross-source their curation. So you can engage the community. We, we have done um, annotation jamboree that way and basically there's multiple people looking at the annotation they select what is good and what is bad and we can use those data either for uh, 
um, feeding databases directly or for giving back feedback to the annotation, the text mining annotation providers to improve and so on. So you can use a lot of different things. Um, I would say that we cover with, with the system, the architecture, we have 80% of text mining. If you go into uh, very grammatical stuff, we might not be able to serve every possible use case, but we can integrate gate and, uh, and, um, uh, and uh, UEMA, and uh, we have done an experiment with Apache Claret so that basically is translating everything into a notation ontology and was feeding this platform, so everything that is in that realm can work, and we have multiple connectors to, to others. So it's, everything is really possible unless you do connection within the text that are very complicated and mostly that becomes a UI problem because the annotation is easy to produce. It's then how you show it that it, it's very complicated. Does Anotopia also work with the structured annotations you showed with Domeo? Yes. So the idea is um, we have validators and actually I'm relying on Anna's, where is Anna's? She left. Anna's queries for validations for OA uh, but uh, when, when I use micro publications or nano publications, I have other queries for validation and they kick in uh, according to the RDF types. So there are lots of extensions for validations of additional content that is structured. The problem I have right now, and I don't know if Greg is still here, but JSON-LD doesn't allow me to do framing for name graphs. And that's something we need in science because micro publication, nano publications, all these things, work with name graphs in RDF, and if I cannot do framing, uh, uh, I have a problem. So I'm stuck a little bit there, but uh, yeah, it works with structured annotation. And we, the idea is also provide specific API to query just the claims or just the, the antibodies when you create structured knowledge, so you can add APIs that just look at that aspect of the annotation, forgetting about the rest that you don't need. Uh, is it limited to academic data? No, actually who pays for this is pharmaceutical industry. And we work with publishers in the past and we are still talking to them. It's not limited to anything really. It's limited to, again, uh, we try to engage other folks in the community to contribute. It's limited to the bandwidth right now. All right. Thank, Thank you. Very much.